G'day friends, welcome to day 15 of Inktober 2018. The prompt for today's piece is, I traded my spectacles for tentacles. And uh, I'm gonna straight up tell you right now, I stole this idea from my sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, Inktober is one of the one times of the year that my family seem to unite in their uh, fear of missing out, their stage 50 FOMO, and they'll sit down and they'll create together and it's so frustrating to me because they're 50 million miles away and of course they do it now. It's only something that I've been trying to get them to do my entire existence, but now that I live all the way over here in the States, um, they get this mad FOMO and that my mum even last year bought some inks, bought some brushes, made a whole art studio for herself. and. Uh, this is not someone that that is into mixed media arts and crafts at all. Like, I mean, she's done the coloring competitions we used to do at Southwest Rocks, but my mom wouldn't take it upon herself just to do art on any given day. Although we had a really fun time reminiscing recently about her scrapbooking phase, um, because it just never clicked to me, but my mom was a scrapbooker once upon a time. And not the scrapbooker in the sense that she made scrapbooks. <laughs> um, she had gone to a, a class on the central coast somewhere I don't know, you, literally, if you're on the Central Coast, you might have been in a class with my mom at one point. Um, it was years and years and years ago. And I remember she had this big suitcase full of scrapbooking supplies, and it never clicked to me that those were my mom's, and that she even tried scrapbooking, because I don't remember her really doing a lot of it. I do know that she made a couple, because I helped her with those, but I guess maybe I thought it was just me that made them. I don't know, I never gave her any credit for it. But yeah, fully found out my mom was a scrapbooker the other day. We were laughing our head off uh, at all the things that she had purchased just, um, just from being like enabled by the scrapbookers around her. <laughs> and I said, like, it is, it is truly the struggle. That is something I can 100% relate to now. And I was just laughing that my mum, you know, I guess paved the way for all of this. I had no idea. So thanks mum. And thanks sis for your idea. She was trying the Inktober prompt and, uh, and she, turned Daisy into a mermaid. It had never occurred to me that she could be a mermaid because I was so fixated on her being every different type of human that she could be. Um, and then when I saw my sister draw a mermaid tail, I thought, oh, amazing, stealing it. <laughs> so I mopped that idea right quick. And um, my sister, I don't think she'll share it. I don't know if my mom will share her piece either, or maybe she has and she's hidden it from me. I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, I, they're just they're just having a lot of fun. And I'm super excited to go home in November and Hopefully they're still feeling the fantasy in November and I can sit down and create with them for one day. I'm not going to promise that I film any of that. That's just, I mean, that's just going to be a family affair, but <laughs> I have literally been trying to get them on board with drawing for years and years and years. It was hard enough just to get my mum to watch me on the trampoline, let alone sit down and draw anything with me. So super excited to go home for that. Um, anyway, so the prompt, uh, really excited, stole the idea from my sister. My mum's a scrapbooker. What else have we got to chat about today? Oh, okay, we have Facebook questions. Um, I'm gonna try and put two together because I think they kind of do go hand in hand. This one says, I'm uber curious about your process, like your inspiration or jumping off point. And then I'm gonna kind of mix it with this one here that says, when doing monthly challenges like this, do you peek at what others come up with or do you purposefully ignore the social media platforms until you lock down on your own idea? Okay, so my process for gathering inspiration or, um, you know, motivation, I kind of see it as the same thing. If I'm motivated, I just don't really need any inspiration. It'll just happen, I guess. <laughs> um, but, you know, in gathering that, I try to pull it from a, a bunch of different sources and it just comes so natural. I have to preface this with saying that because this is my business, I devote a lot more time to this than I think the average person could even think about devoting to it. Just because if you have like an actual job, you know, you're not going to have nine hours of the day where you're just doing arts and crafts, which is, um, it, it's my truth currently. <laughs> it's a fabulous truth that I could never have uh, guessed would happen in my life. And I'm super grateful for it. Um, but yeah, it, it does come with its challenges at times. And I think pulling inspiration, it's, it's one of those things I've actually learned to deal without it. And, um, and still go and do it, even if I've got nothing that's is particularly inspiring me. If I've got a bit of motivation to do it, I will just generally sit down and wait for that to happen. I gen you you kind of have to start for it to show up if it's not there beforehand. But in the process of gathering it, I can get it from anywhere. And, and no, I, I absolutely do not turn off or block any kind of social media platforms. For me, first of all, because it is a business, like it's the way I make my livelihood. So it would be terrible if I did that. <laughs> um, I do kind of have to stay connected, but 
As far as pulling inspiration and, and watching other people, it's one of the most motivating things you can do. I recently heard Courtney Diaz say on her Patreon that she gets really inspired by watching other people, or she just really enjoys watching other people talk about things that she's passionate about and listening to those studio vlogs where people just go really deep and um, and just get really into it all. And, and I feel the same way. I feel like that rings true for me as well. And um, it was an interesting thought because I thought like, it's not just that I'm inspired to maybe try something that they're trying. I, it's just motivating. It's just fuel for the fire of actually sitting at your table and doing it. And I think it has a lot to do with the fun that I see people having. I'm, I'm more motivated to catch that fun for myself. And, um, and if I see someone having a really great time, like Ali Brown, when she's uh, doing her abstract florals, it, I, I always try to sit down and do them. I don't have a lot of success, so I don't really share it a lot, but it's a super fun process for me to try. And I try to learn from what she's doing. And I, you know, I just kind of enjoy that process. And I'm mostly just inspired to do it because Ali looks like she's having so much fun and I've got FOMO. So I'm not missing out on that. <laughs> Um, also her abstract expressionism with portraits and even just the straight up ab abstract pieces she does. I've been really trying to, to have a go at it because um, I just love the way that she feels expressed by that. I love the way that she's been talking about it. Um, yeah, when I, when I see people doing lots of fun things and having a great time doing it or having a blast, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to do that. don't want to miss my window of opportunity. So I will just sit down and do whatever they're doing. And as far as pulling inspiration, um, it's, it's different. Sometimes I will reference certain things. Like if I really need a pose for something that I haven't drawn before, I'll reference a Google image or something. Um, and pulling reference as far as style goes, um, if I'm just working, you know, personally, like for myself, or I'm doing a challenge like, like, uh, Inktober and Daisy, I will like to play with all of those things because, um, you know, I feel like there's never enough time in the day to really try everything, but I do, I do want to try everything. I want to see if there's not something I like about this that I could work into something I already like. And I think it's having that mix of all the styles together and taking all of your favorite inspirations and all of your favorite references that really start to build upon you having a really great time doing it. Not necessarily a specific style because I feel like it's always changing and it's always, you know, kind of growing as you grow anyway, but it's more about the process of, of having a really great great time doing it. Most of the time I don't even really care about what the pieces end up looking like. I'll always sit there and think, like if you ask me about anything, I'll probably always say if I spent more time on it, it would have been better. And this is kind of true for Inktober and all these daisy prompts because I kind of give myself an hour to two hours to do them. Some of them have been a lot quicker and some of them have been a lot longer. And honestly, you'd be shocked at the ones that took longer because <laughs> they're not the best. Um, it has a lot to do with the fact that I can't pencil in the sketch before I ink it, which I feel like I should just break that rule at this point. But I'm, I don't know, I'm over halfway, so I just really want to... Um, finish it the way I set out. I don't know, I've got this weird thing going on in my brain that I just can't turn off that I just have to do it in ink. But, you know, even a piece like this would have been really great to sketch out first so that all the tentacles in the negative space could have been a bit more evenly placed. I did think I lucked out with where I put them because it wasn't until I inked them in with the ink that I thought, oh, okay, thank goodness. But if you see down in the bottom right hand corner, there's a lot of sketchy lines going on down there. <laughs> um, so I could have benefited from, from sketching this out beforehand. Uh, but as far as references go, it's, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where like, if I, if I need the help, I will take the help. And if I need to, uh, if I want to try a different style and I, I, I like what someone's doing, I might take parts of it. Like if I like the way someone draws lips, I might try and learn how to draw those lips and then see where I can take it or maybe see what I want to do with it. Um, but there's always a sense of copying at the beginning. And that's why I encourage people, um, for my content anyway, I know that this is not everyone's vision, but if you're looking at something and you like it, I have no problem with you copying it to uh, to learn from that and to see if you like that. And if you can't use that in your own work, it, you know, even if you copy the entire piece because you're trying to get a feel for something, if you're doing that all in learning, I mean, it's never done in vain. And we all started by copying. Like, I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't. <laughs> like, we've all had someone teach us what to do, or we've seen it in a book, or we've looked at someone else's work and seen how they did something and, and then tried it for ourselves. It is an essential part of learning. 
obviously you're only going to run into problems um, if you start to sell someone else's work as your own. And I think that's a given, but you always kind of have to put that out there. <laughs> but as far as learning and trying, that's, I love to play with all the crayons in the crayon box. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? I mean, so much of what's there is to be tried and we live in such a great day of social media that you have access to so much. You can really build an education for yourself just off of YouTube. Um, and I say that from personal experience because I did not know about mixed media art journaling before 2015. So three years in, I feel like I've gotten a really good understanding of why people do it and how they do it and the different mediums that work in different books. And it's all from watching other people do it. I, um, you know, I've had some my, my own experimental playtime, but the foundation of everything that I know and I understand comes from the people that I was watching on YouTube from the beginning. So, you know, your Tim Holtz, your uh, Diane Reevely, your Dina Wakely, like anyone that was showing at CHA back in the day, I've seen every single video that you could ever possibly watch from the uh, from the Ranger designers, and um, even uh, Jane Davenport. I, she was one of the first people that I saw doing all of these whimsical looking uh, mermaids and fairies and I was learning from that and then I started to run into uh, other creators that had Facebook groups and um, then had patron Patreons and you know I, I'm always finding new people that are trying different things and being so excited to try these different things and I'm just trying to watch them all and be excited with them. I think as a creator like on this flip side it is so exciting to see other people being excited about what you're excited about. It just kind of you know really reaffirms that you're not a crazy person for sitting in your art studio putting stickers in a book all day long. <laughs> um, so it is it's really reaffirming for that but you know it's it, it's one of those things like inspiration can come from anywhere and I, I would never uh, I would never close the door to it as far as turning off from social media. I know that some people do need to and I don't think it's more that they don't want to be inspired by anything. I actually think that a lot of people turn off social media when it becomes um, a bit difficult to process internally as far as comparison. <clears throat> Pardon me. I've heard a lot of people um, say in the past that you know, once you start to compare someone's process to yours, it can become very discouraging. And so people won't even feel inspired to do anything or motivated. They'll just sit there and feel bad about their own work. So those are the types of um, moments where I feel like people start to uh, ditch social media because it's giving them a very negative response to what they want to be doing. Um, but I don't really run into that just because, you know, I just don't think I have the time or like the luxury to do that. <laughs> um, if you know, that's where I have to flip it back on its head and say that because this is a business, I don't allow myself to struggle with the things that would stop it from being, you know, f would stop growth from the business. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm not human and that I don't have those struggles. Of course, we all compare ourselves. Um, one of those quotes, what, what is it like? Don't compare your, uh, you know, your stage one to someone else's stage 10. You know what I mean? Like one of those types of quotes that float around and about. Um, it, it's true. You shouldn't do that. I, um, I tend to be very motivated by other people's success and by other people's triumphs though. It was something that I noticed when I was a dancer. And I think early on, um, being a male dancer, there was always less of you than there were girls. There's, um, only ever a handful of males around, uh, when I was younger and growing up. And it was the sense that like when those guys were doing better than me when they were dancing better, they had better technique, their tricks were better. And I noticed how, um, how well they were doing. I, at first felt very competitive. I felt like it could be one of us, like you couldn't have us both. But over time, I got to understand that we were both still in the same performance. We were both still doing things that, you know, we got to do. And there was literally room for both of us on the stage. So it turned from this very competitive feeling into a, um, can you teach me how to do that? Or I really like how you do this. How do you do that? And so I more wanted to learn from them so I could be like them. And I don't think I had any, any of the male dancers I've ever asked to help me. I don't think they've ever been not flattered by that. It's, it's always, um, it always feels good when someone, you know, believes in you enough and wants to be mentored by you in some kind of way. So, um, yeah, I think the inspiration is all out there. It's, it's obviously whatever floats your boat, you're going to hold on to and, uh, finding really finding people like-minded people that are super passionate about it will be the motivation that takes that inspiration to, uh, you know, new places for you. 
So I hope that helped. I'll uh, be on YouTube later today with a sketch flicks of Hocus Pocus. So if you like that movie, be sure not to miss that. <laughs> okay, bye.